Thank you very much, Gabriel, and good evening to everybody. Ever since I was a little girl, I found that women could achieve exactly the same things like men. Of course, they may not be as strong as men, I knew that from quarreling with my brothers, but they were just as smart, just as intelligent, just as cunning as men. I think I was a lucky person because I had parents who brought me up this way. My parents just told me you don't have to wait for a prince on a white horse to come and take you away. You could be your own queen. Once you have a good education, once you have a good job, you can do and achieve whatever you want. So, in 1978, I finished university. Um, 1978, I guess there are quite a few people who are not, we were not born at, in that year. So, um, and since this whole event is taking place in Cologne, I would like, uh, just like to point out that the uh, local soccer club, Erster FC Köln, won his last national championship in 1978. Though that's a while ago, but that's when I started working. I started working at the ministry, as Gabriel said, and the environment I found there was not to my liking. It was a very male-dominated world. There were lots of men in gray suits. We were just 13 women with an academic background. This was not the environment to work and have children. That was my impression. Women were like beautiful accessories. You had secretaries, you had cleaning ladies, and all in all, no role models for me. The women who were there were usually not married, didn't have children. So I was not too sure whether I would really continue my career at this place. So, at that same ministry, I retired after almost 40 years as I director general. To, to give you just a brief idea, um, the federal ministry, German federal ministries, there are about 18,000 people working. Out of them, there are all in all about 110 directors general and 27 of them are women. So you get an idea that I climbed fairly high up the ladder. Well, I worked at this place, and when I left it, after almost 40 years, I left a very diverse working place, a place where women could play a very important role, where men could work part-time and bring up children. A lot had changed during all these years. Um, so I would like to give you a few snapshots, like it was, what it was like in the beginning, to give you an idea what I felt. I had my first child, and I had, that was uh, in the early 80s, and I had this somewhat absurd idea of even having a second child. So I went to the then director general and told him that I had a, was going to have a baby, and then he said to me, I'm so sorry, Frau Fiedler, you're going to leave us now with your two children. I'm sure you're going to stay at home. You have a husband who's a medical doctor. He will take care of you financially, and that will be it. That was not it for me, but what I did, I continued working part-time. But what I had to experience then was, as a person working part-time, I didn't seem to be one of the really good performers. Not because I was not good at my job, but simply because I didn't dedicate myself totally and all day long in this job. At that time, a person working part-time was not really somebody who would be promoted. So I had a very good track record, but there was no promotion for me because I was only working part-time. At that time, I swore to myself, if I would ever be given the chance to change this, to really do something in favor of women, to go through the glass ceiling, to open up, to make space for women. That is something what I would want to do, and that was my credo. So, in a way, I was lucky, because I could, I got the opportunity. I was privileged to be able to witness, to influence, and to promote change at the ministry. To give you just a very, very quick look at some figures, I don't have to say much. We started in 78 with 3% female academics, 55% in 2018. Female managers, none in 78, 50% of all managers female in 2018. Part-time managers, none in 78, 94, and 14% when I left. 
I don't have to say more. You see, that was really quite a success story. So, of course, you will wonder, how did we do it? There's a French saying, chercher la femme. It means that behind every powerful man, there's always a woman in his back who tells him what to do. I would like to use this in a little different way. I would say, cherchez les femmes. Look out for the women, because that's what happened. We had a female minister at that time at the ministry, and this woman, who was a very experienced person and politician, knew exactly what to do. So she chose women and put women into key positions. What she did, she chose the first ever female head of staff, and that was me. Because she knew a woman, there has to be a woman who does things for women and for women with children. So from now on, the first thing what I did was trying to change attitudes. It was something new at the ministry then, that people who only worked part-time could be promoted. It hadn't been like that before. It was totally okay from then on, when somebody's child fell ill, that the mother or father could go home and look after their child and not stay at the very important meeting. It was totally okay to tell your secretary that when your children, one of your children would call you on the phone, that she should call you out of that meeting. These things had never happened before. And that was a change of attitude. I did it, many other women did it, and men did it, and that's how we changed attitudes. But of course, that's not the only thing you, you have to do and you do. There were factual changes taking place. We were very lucky because um, there was a law demanding equal rights for men and women, which at that time uh, we had in Germany. A law is one thing, but you need people to really do what the law requires. And to, to just give you a few examples of what we did, and we, that is, the minister, that was myself, it was many other women at the ministry, and also um, a female rights officer we had who played a very powerful role. So, for one, when I started working part-time, there was one model for working part-time, either 50% or nothing. We changed it so that men and women could work part-time, and we had 150 different models. So we really catered for each and every need. Other example. To close the gap between men and women, you may remember that we had so many more men academic staff working. So to close this gap, we set ourselves a goal of hiring up to 60% of women for a certain period. We were very successful at that. And you see, you could have a look at the figures and see that we were successful. Last example, we um, agreed on a goal with the minister that by 2022, we would have 50% of female managers. You saw the figures, we reached that by 2018 already. So, of course, many of the things we did are now state of the art, but at that time when we did it, it was, it was something totally new, and we were very successful in hiring good people, good women, good men, because they saw that we did something really very special. So, just very quickly to tell you again what I think changed the whole of the thing. The first was, um, you need strong women on top, middle, and at the bottom. So we had an approach from the top, the minister, we had me and other women at the bottom, and we had our, human, uh, our female rights uh, officer in the middle, so that was very important. Second thing, it's very important to change attitudes and to do factual changes. That's, uh, that really counts. So, um, we had it at the ministry, there was a survey in 2018, and um, the people were asked, can balancing family duties and work be easily managed when you work at the ministry? And we had a fantastic figure. 80% of all the employees of the ministry, which is now about 1,500 people, 80% of which said yes, wholeheartedly yes. You may say, well, that's, maybe that's normal, but if you look into the private sector, there is a monitoring being done to that exa exactly same question. And the answer there is 40%. 40% of all people think that enough is being done to be able to combine the job and your family. 
So that was the ministry. You may wonder, but well, I don't work at the ministry. I don't want to work at a ministry, but what can I do as a woman to really get that space that I need? Let me give you a few advice. For one, strive for the best education you can ever get. Start early, never stop doing it. It's so very important. And with the German education system, which is quite open, it's very easy. You can start off as a hairdresser, you can end as a professor. Do it. Second point, don't be shy. Don't be humble. Don't be reserved. Look at today's role models. Look at Greta Thunberg. Look at Malala Yousafzai. Look at Carola Rakete. These women stand, they are women. They are strong. They say whatever they want to say. And they don't want to be everybody's darling. I know quite a few women would say, but that's not easy. It's fairly difficult. But I can tell you from my own experience, start doing it, practice it, and you will get good at it. Last point, fight for your opportunities. Many women think they don't want to fight. Many women think, think that when they talk about their qualities, this is boasting. But men do it all the time. So you can do it just as well, right? And again, start doing it, try doing it, and you will get very good. Last and very important point for me, check out your future employers. Check, do they have part-time jobs in place? Check, do they have home office opportunities? Check, do they have women at the top level? It's so very important, and do not just use one way. Talk to friends, talk to friends' friends, check out web pages, look at Kununu and other rating agencies. The more work you put into that beforehand, the better your dividend will be in the end. So this was it for the women, but when you're a woman with children, but also when you're a man with children, or one of you wants to have children, what working environment would you need then? I think it's very important for you to look into your future employer's general attitude towards family with children. You may wonder, how do I do it? It's fairly easy. Check out the web pages again. See if they have parent-children rooms, for example, right? Rooms where parents can bring children when ch children are not very well. Children, parents can work, children can be there. But look into the canteen. When you see at lunch that there are parents sitting together with their children, then you can see and know that there is an open attitude towards um, children. Look at career opportunities. Can you see people at the top who work part-time? This is possible, and it can be very successfully done, but look whether this is in place. My advice would really be to mothers and fathers, choose a working environment where you really can be sure that all the measures I have named, I have mentioned that all these measures are in place. Of course, when you're a very strong-willed woman or man with a lot of time on your hand, you can do it. You can do it for 40 years like I did. But really, I mean, you will get old and gray. Would you really like that? I don't think so. So there's just one take-home message for you after everything I have said. If you want a woman or family-friendly working environment, use the shortcut. Don't go the long way. You have so many opportunities today to really go the short way and get directly, immediately what you want.